All right, everyone, it is uh, September the, uh, let me look, it's, it's the 7th, uh, 2012. Today is Friday. It is uh, uh, around noon, almost noon. Uh, it's 1230 Eastern Standard Time, 1130 Central Standard Time, which is where I'm calling to, uh, which is in Texas, and talking to Thomas Griffin for Congress um, out of the uh, uh, fourth uh, uh, district, I believe there. Yeah, the district number four in the U.S. House. Um, he's running as a libertarian candidate um, against Ralph Hall, um, who, by the way, voted for the National Defense Reauthorization Act of 2012, which uh, legalizes um, or attempts to legalize indefinite detention. It's still going through the courts, um, and uh, he had voted A on that. Um, so that basically, in a nutshell, allows people to be just um, plopped up um, you know, Soviet style. And um, but uh, Thomas, it's great to talk to you today. And, uh, and Thomas is joining us on on the phone right now. Uh, we start off by asking people their motivation, their drive, um, and and what is your motivation drive to be uh, a, a candidate to give people an option in the fourth dis district without having to choose between those um, Republicans and those Democrats. Uh, and good afternoon, Thomas. Good to speak with you today. Yes. Uh, well, thanks for the. Uh interview. Hey, yes, uh, the thing that I'm interested in is returning to constitutional values in this country. I see so much of politics these days just blowing in the wind with, uh, you know, uh, and there's so much uh, embedded lobbying and, and control over over people in Congress. I mean, that's the only way I can understand uh, whether it comes from the GOP directly or from corporate interests or you know, that, that uh, I, I would just like to see us return to constitutional values. Get our country back. I mean, it, it's that's what people mean by when we want our country back. I, I mean, it, it has nothing to do with, um, you know, a bomb or whatever. It's, it's It has to do with, the, especially at the congressional level, I think, um, uh, be, our government being owned pretty much um, by their actions, at least, uh, by special interests. And uh, well, what, what's uh, so that's got you motivated? Um, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the fourth district, uh, Thomas, to let our listeners know. Is I'm calling you from Florida, actually, and um, so have yeah, you give us a brief um, overlay of uh, your uh, your fourth district there, sir? Oh yes, the fourth district. Uh, it's a, it's actually a rather large district. It, it encompasses uh, some uh, nearly twenty counties, and it stretches all the way from. Uh, from just north of Dallas all the way up to Texarkana. So it, it's quite a broad district, and, and uh, I, I have uh, been trying to get a handle on how do I, you know, appeal to all these people, you know, because it, it's a very, very, uh, you know, a lot, lot of land there, a lot of space. Well, if, if, do you think if people knew what the NDAA was, um, do you think um, they would feel voting a or yes on that would represent them, and do you think it would be an appeal to them to have an alternate solution, um, especially in this um, year, this where you, you know the conditions seem just right for um, uh, 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 independent third-party candidate to uh, you know assert themselves on the ballot and, and and for people to assert themselves by electing uh, individuals who who aren't just anybody but people who will take their oath seriously as well i mean that has to be a condition of you know someone that would get my vote if they were independent or third party but if they met those conditions then sure i don't i, I don't think um, i'm going to miss you know republicans or democrats much at all i don't think i'm going to have withdrawals from them or anything in fact i might feel better than i ever have before <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I think uh, the, as far as legislation goes, you know, the NDAA is just one part of the, the thing that just, just it, 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 the way I see it, it's just crazy, the kind of stuff that's been going on. Uh, the uh, other issues that I think are, are equally or maybe even worse are, uh, you know, the, the obsessive uh, printing of money that's going on in this country, devaluation of our currency. They won't allow a change in the legal tender laws, um, and and all these foreign wars. You know, we need to we need to get, stop all this aggression in other countries. You know, I, I know we call it defense, but but it's really taking on more the tone of aggression. 
but we're Team that. America. We have to, um, you know, bring democracy and, and civilization to these countries, Thomas, right? It's, it's our job to police the world, right? Since we have the biggest military, we spend all more than all the rest of the world combined. I mean, isn't that our, our job here on Earth? Uh, I, I, I think uh, as far as the, the government of the United States, is we should be obeying the Constitution and governing our people. And there's nothing in there that, that gives us the right to go into other countries and effect regime change in other countries. Yeah, we didn't put in a constitutional amendment yet that we're an empire, right? We're still a republic, is that correct? Or we're trying to keep one, Is that might be true. Like, last, I, last I checked, that was, that was planned. Yeah, I mean, so it depends how we, we see ourselves. If we see ourselves as a republic, then, you know, we might have this kind of military um, strategy. If we see ourselves as an empire, um, then, you know, then we have, like, verging on what we're having now. And, um, and if we can't defend ourselves against special interests, how can we hope to defend ourselves against other countries? Um, and so, I mean, that, that, that would be part of a strong defense. Um, I mean, especially if we're civilian-controlled um, military. I mean, it was Eisenhower who warned us about the industrial military complex, and it was easier for him to say it because, you know, he had that clout of being a, a you know, a, a supreme general or, or whatever. Um, what, uh, so that's, I mean, and the, and the military has to do with our spirit as a country, um, the rule of law, but it also has to do with our budgets. And um, what do you think about... Um, you know, uh, the drug war, um, uh, the war on drugs, do you think uh, there's a better way to handle it than, I mean, that's the longest war that's been going on even since longer than Afghanistan, and I think it's probably been going on for, you know, thousands of years before that. I mean, do you think that's an enforceable type of law, or what are your positions on that, sir? Um, well, as far as wars go, we've, we've not had a, a formally congressionally declared war since uh, World War II. I mean, all these are like police actions and, and uh, uh, or UN actions, uh, even. Yeah, United Yeah, Nations. and and that that stinks to high heaven as well. Um, but but the the issue with the drugs, you know, the war on drugs. The, the real problem is not the drugs; it's the war, and and it's the war that that, that is that is uh, just just crippling us, uh, and and it is just. Uh, making the problem many, many times worse, and that we're spending billions of dollars to try and control it, but it's doing nothing but making it, uh, making it worse. Um, the, the, uh, and, and, you know, the, the big issue to me is that uh, what, what the net result of it is is that all these illegal drugs, it's causing a huge number of, uh, of our, our people to be incarcerated and put in jail. Um, for, for more or less offenses against their own self. You know, it, it, it doesn't harm anybody else. And, and did you and know we have more people incarcerated than any other country um, per capita and just on the numbers than even China, Russia, Iran, all these countries that were complaining, you know, violate human rights? Yeah, it's, uh, the, the, the deal about prisons is it, it is a big business here in this country. And, and I, I think that this is another one of these uh, lobbying things where, where the, the, the basically the prison is an industry that is has exerting some control over our politicians, and it, it's influencing political decisions. And, and uh, so it, it perpetuates as is a big business. And, and I, yeah, I, they get <laughs> like about $40,000 per um, individual per year. You know, they could probably pay them like twelve thousand dollars just to keep them in a hotel or something you know right so these uh, the war on drugs and, and the prison issue I, I think that's uh, those go hand in hand and uh, when no. you start looking looking at where the drugs are flowing from uh, you know we saw years ago uh, cocaine was being flown in on CIA airplanes and and now we we go look over in Afghanistan and uh, before we went into Afghanistan. The Taliban had control of the country, but the the drug production had actually gone down dramatically while they were in control. And then, as soon as uh, we we went in there and kicked out the Taliban, now the drug uh, trade has increased forty fold. 
Yeah, it kind of spiked up just the same way the health insurance company stock spiked up after, you know, the um, uh, patient affordability, you know, the Obamacare passed. And um, I, I mean, it did very, very s s similar ways. I have seen those charts as well. And um, I, it, yeah, and, and so th there's a lot of special interest there as, as well. I mean, it's almost like the people who are in charge of the drug policy must be on drugs, you know. Um, Right, right. And, and the bottom line is it is not working. We're spending billions of dollars on this, and it's not working. It's only making the problem worse. I, I personally, I, I have several uh, friends, good friends of mine, who they have had, uh, they, they, would, they would have a son that, that would, uh, his life would be totally destroyed by heroin. And then this, this is only a fire that's being fanned by the actions going on in Afghanistan. And yes. The and production that they have coming out of there. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, and, and that's w a lot of ways, like, where certain shadowy parts of our government gets, um, you, you know, these uh, black budgets as well that they don't have to report. They uh, sell drugs. Um, and, uh, I mean, that's what I've read in, in the papers, although I don't know all the facts because there isn't a whole lot of transparency either. I mean, do, do, what, what do you think about that? Do you think as a congressional representative, um, you, you know, you should be able to help enlighten people of what's going on in our government? Some, a lot of these issues, I almost feel like, you know, how can I even talk about them? Because I don't even really know, I feel like I know I, that I have all the facts, you know? I, I, I have a real problem with uh the, the issue of transparency. Uh, our current administration, uh, before they got into office, they made big claims about uh, transparency and that they would give every bill 72 hours and for people to review it and blah, blah, blah. And we haven't seen that. Uh, you know, and, and also uh, when just recently when Congress went to Eric Holder and demanded that that he released these documents about the past and periods of Project Gunwalker or whatever that program was, uh, he, he refused. And then when they really put the screws to him, they, they were putting the pressure to, to try and force the documents out, then, you know, our, our uh, president stepped them in and said, no, nope, I have executive privilege, you're not going to get to see those. So no, this is... This is the kind of thing where we're not getting transparency here. You know, this is just a blatant in-your-face, I'm not going to tell you. You're, you're absolutely right, and, and there's so many broken promises that Obama has, has done from, from the health care where he said he would never put in an individual mandate where he was actually dogging Hillary Clinton for that um, in, the, in those debates where he said he was a constitutional scholar. He knew the meaning of how bad signing statements were, and, and we just don't do stuff like that, he, you know, to not having any lobbyists in his administration, and, 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 and the list goes on and on. It's, it's like a trail of uh, broken promises, and... Um, and, and, and so, yeah, the transparency um, it, it is an issue. I mean, we're either, you know, a government for by the people or I guess we're a government of by and for um, the, the, the people in the know. And, um, and uh, so, I mean, a lot of people are making these uh, decisions on life and death like war and, 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 and you know, trillion-dollar budgets, and, and they don't even know all the facts. Um, and so it's – well, what, what's your um, position on um, – you, you know, I, I know this is kind of a hot topic. It's, um, but, but uh, you know, people probably be interested in the fourth district. Um, you, you know, on the uh, 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 abortion debates. Um, uh, do you have any, What's your solution to you know how the body politic is nowadays, sir? Um, I, I lean towards the libertarian view, and and uh, you know, I, I I kind of see this from two different perspectives. I. I think uh, the Constitution, the only thing it really says about this kind of thing is that it wants to protect life. Uh, you know, that, that's we're talking about life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And, and that, uh, you know, abortion directly, you know, talks about life. But, but when you start talking about end of life, uh, you know, we have four different ways that, that our government is now controlling uh, end, end of life, you know, they're intervening and making rules, you know, you, you have uh, abortion, you have uh, uh, targeted assassination now, that, that uh, you know, now U.S. citizens can be assassinated at will, yeah. um, and then we have uh, in the prison system, uh, you know, people are, can be executed, 
Um, and then you have, you know, for the elderly, you have end-of-life care there. And, and, and so the government is making decisions in all these different areas about how to, you know, how to, <laughs> I don't know how you, you could say it, but oh, yeah, so you're, what, you're... let them die. But, but the thing is, that's a very slippery slope, and we're, we're, it's, it's being approached from multi-different facets. But, you know, these, these are the kind of things that I, I think that the federal government should not have any say about this. This is, it should be left to the states and families and, yeah. and uh, you know, to, to other districts. No, that, that that's 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 a good point, uh, and, and that that's pretty much like uh, well, that's the libertarian position, and, and that's a way where you, you you know it's 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 pretty much a way until we you know more about it. Um, uh, uh, to be quite honest, uh, because I can understand not wanting federal my you know someone someone's federal tax dollars going to something that they totally oppose at the same time. I mean, if a woman was raped or what whatever, or if there was. Um, you, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's, I don't think we need to set up a, you, you know, a, an abortion police either. You know, it just doesn't seem like that's a, a, a practical or judicious thing to do. And, and, and um, but um, now, uh, any other issues, Thomas, that I haven't mentioned that um, you, you think is, um, you, you know, needs to be mentioned here, uh, sir? Um, well, one, one thing that, that really, uh, Kind of, kind of a follow-up on what you're talking about is, is uh, you know, the, the separation between federal government and local, you know, state and local governments. Is, and and uh, we, we have a, a federal government that's completely out of control now. And then the, the founding fathers, they wrote the Constitution, they very clearly, you know, wrote the into the Constitution the enumerated powers. And, and, uh, and, and basically what it's getting at is that these are the things the federal government is supposed to do and then any, everything else is supposed to be left up to the states. But we're right, if it's not listed, so then, then they can't do it, right. It's, it's, so if it's not listed, we assume that it can't be done. It's not the other way around. Right, right. And that, that's, uh, that's a big part of my position. And, and it's basically when somebody, you know, I, I, I think Congress, or our federal Congress, is too wound around the actual uh, debating and, and voting on things that, that they, it's really, they, they shouldn't be having any hand in it. Um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a, uh, a biography of Thomas Jefferson right now, and, and it, it was very clear in saying that that uh, he, even when he was serving as, as vice president, uh, he 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 basically took the, the uh, summer and then uh, about uh, six months of a year off and went home and did his, his personal things, and then. Um, but, but when it, it, in the fall, when in November, when it came time to open Congress, he had to be there to open Congress. And so, so they, they, at that time, they didn't have to be there in Washington. They, they could have a personal life doing their own thing. And so I, I think what we've got is a, a federal government that's, that's got their hand in too many things, and they spend too much time, uh, you know, trying to have laws and all that for things that they, it's really not their business. A lot of it is also, yeah, like knee-jerk reactions, like something happens and they feel like, oh, well, we have to put a Band-Aid right over that when it doesn't even address the real problem. And and, um, and, and then a lot of it is just self-preservation, um, you, you know, and, and a lot of it is people not asserting their um, their power o over the, uh, you, you, you know, the, this uh, whole election. I mean, we're supposed to, yeah, you're right, we have the Supreme Court, we have the Congress, we have the presidency. We have the states, um, which can also be another good balance of power, and then we have um, we're supposed to have the media also, and uh, they also have uh, pretty low approval ratings. But now we need to see you on the debates. Um, I would love to see you in the debates, actually, against um, your opponents here, um, Ralph and Valinda. Uh, but um, what people need to call, like um, you, you know, the television stations that. Um, that that where the are, do you know if you're going to be in the debates yet, sir? Or um, I mean, do you have the dates for those already? Um, well, I, I haven't. Uh, I think I've seen one email about that, but no, I'm not up to date on that. Okay, and uh, now you're that just to kind of sum it up here. You're talking about how you can. Um, I uh, find some kind of coalition um, between you, everyone from your district, from the, the north to the south. And I think we just went through some issues where that could possibly be done. I mean, I think if I was someone who's a libertarian, obviously, um, if I was a Republican, it's, um, 
I mean, you're just going to remember why you didn't like them in the past. And the same thing with the Democrats. I mean, that's why we've been going back and forth, back and forth with the House. I mean, it's actually, it's 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 the it's it's like a, a woman's contractions. They're getting less and less now instead of waiting every 10 years or 20 years before a switch of party control. It's it's be starting to be like every you know four or two years, and pretty soon. People are just going to be, that's enough, and then they're going to eventually select independents and third parties, and, and people like you that are there for these opportune situations are going to be the people that actually do get in there and are going to be given an, an opportunity to uh, show what's, um, you, you know, independent, free-thinking, uh, constitutionally, democratically elected republic uh, can do when the people are informed and, um, and aware. And, uh, well, well, now, you did mention Thomas Jefferson, and this is usually kind of the uh, final closing questions um, we have here is, like, who's some of your people that um, you've been thinking about lately? They don't even have to be people that you like, but um, just people that you've been thinking about um, and, and, and why, sir? Um, you, you mean in the political areas? It could or? be political. It could be uh, just, um, you know, it's someone, a past figure. I mean, it could be, um, you, you know, someone in your modern day life that no one's ever heard of. Uh, I mean, just, um, you, you know, just, yeah, it could be a, a, anything. Usually people say political figures like George Washington or, or Bastiat or, or someone like that, but it could be anyone. I mean, it could be anybody that's... Um, that you've been thinking about re recently that you would like to share with us? Okay, well, uh, you know, I, I, I really like, you know, Thomas Jefferson. That's why I'm reading the biography. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really getting a very good respect for him. And, and it, 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 I find it quite interesting to see how the uh, government came about and about how, how the, uh, you know, how all the inner workings of it and the, the infighting, you know, and, and I see a lot of the same patterns that were going on back then as they're going on right now, you know, the big fights between uh, the Federalists and the, uh, the, the Republican, uh, they call it Democratic Republican guys, and uh, it, it, that's all quite interesting. And in the current day, uh, one of the guys I really admire is Ron Paul. I mean, he, he's done some really great things as far as uh, trying to push some great legislation. Unfortunately, uh, most of it gets slapped down, and, and everybody just, just laughs, and they, they ignore him. Um, but, you know, I think the biggest thing that he's been pushing that I fully agree with is a change in legal, legal tender laws to allow gold and silver to be used. You know, Competing money. currencies, at least, you know, and a full audit. I mean, right now they yeah. ha they tax gold and silver, and you can't compete. You might go to jail, you know, if you try to use that. Yeah, well, one the, the thing is, we we have an economic reckoning coming. You know, a uh, uh, very likely just a failure of the dollar as mm. a current. And uh, but but the thing is, it would be a very small change. All we have to do is. is to allow gold and silver as currency, and then that would give us some, an alternate, something to fall back on that would totally, you know, take all the wind out of that uh, the, the, the fear of a collapse. So the transfer of wealth that's happening from us to the people who get the money first, I mean, they get the swig out of the uh, liquor cabinet, and then they water it down and then give the rest to us. Um, I mean, right. Well, that's, exact, that's exactly why they do not want to let it, uh, you know, the tender laws change. Yeah, they give trillions to their, uh, f you know, overseas banking friends, and and, um, and then we just get to pay back the debt, and, and then they get to use us as collateral. Um, and, and and it's it's really supposed to be us, we the people. We should be m making these decisions. Um, and uh, it, 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 yeah, the whole m money debates. I was thinking something about that. Um, is that. Um, uh, it's a c competing currencies too could, could could be a good thing. I mean, we re re really pretty much already have that. Um, I would, I don't know, but um, anyways, Thomas, um, what is uh, the, the way people can contact you is um, it's thomasgriffing.com. Uh, uh, Thomas T H O M A S G R I F F I N G dot com. Um, and and th here's the other point I was gonna make. Like you mentioned, Ron Paul, he was in the fourteenth district. You're running for the fourth district. Um, it matters, even if you're in the 14th district, you're not 
going to have another Ron Paul running now this year, right? So, um, you're going to have some Republican um, probably. Why not support uh, Thomas Griffin then? I mean, I was a fan of Ron Paul as well, and I'm, you know, in Florida near Tampa. So it, it doesn't matter where you're at. You, this is going to be a national campaign. It's going to be a shot heard around the world. Looking back, you know, talking about re Revolutionary War history, uh, that was Ralph Waldo Emerson's quotes um, about, uh, with the Concord hymn um, about that. And, uh, and this would be a shot heard around the world. If there's 50 independent and third-party candidates elected to the Congress in 2000. And 12. And um, Thomas, we do appreciate your time today. And I uh, hope you have an excellent afternoon this Friday. Good weekend, a successful campaign. Um, you know, I, I think you reach out to everyone. Um, you, you, you know, go into. Uh, Go into universities at the same time. Go into the projects and, and tell them you have, you, you know, all these issues that we talked about. I don't think it matters if you're a Green Party candidate or a Libertarian candidate. Actually, I actually I've seen a lot of fusion candidates this year. Um, and uh, so, uh, any final words? If not, uh, that should be about it, sir. No, uh, that that's uh, you know I I, I you know, like your your uh, sentiments also about the electing, you know, about the voting policy. And, you know, the Libertarians are going to be on all the 50 state ballots. And uh, I think what we need to do, if we want this to, to succeed, we need to encourage people to select, you know, the straight line Libertarian as far as their base voting. And, and then if they want to choose somebody else from a Republican or a Democrat, then they can, you know, put those in. But uh, that is, well, that, I would say that, I mean, be. if you have a libertarian in, in your uh, district, go for it. Um, if you're in a district where you only have a Green Party, I would support you to, I would say, support them above a Democrat and Republican. Let's try to get as many people that are against the war, who are sincere about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, um, you know, legal searches and seizures, First Amendment, etc., who want to end the drug war. I mean... Um, who wants to uh, stop uh, crony capitalism and call people out who break their oath. I mean, if, if we just did those four things, like Reagan always want, you know, ran on like three simple platforms, I mean, just those simple things can change the entire world and create a new renaissance possibly with the momentum it would start. But I didn't mean to interrupt you, sir. Yeah, go go ahead. You're right about the Libertarian Party. I mean, that's where we found a lot of information for our interviews, um, lp.org. Just go to the candidates list, um, and uh, there's hundreds of people running. I mean, there's enough people running that it's Independence, Libertarian Party, Green Party, and et cetera, to make a difference. I mean, you know, about I would say about 70% of all the districts in the entire country has an alternate choice. And, and actually, yeah, Libertarian Party is like, it, it's it's definitely the third biggest party out there. And if you look at the platform, there's nothing in it that um, I don't think anyone could disagree with. I mean, it's basically just principled things about civil liberties, sir. Right. Well, anyway, yeah, I, I do appreciate uh, your the interview and the airtime. And, uh, you know, like, I hope this uh, works out this time. Well, thank you very much for your time, uh, Thomas. We appreciate your accessibility. Everyone, uh, please, um, you, you know, if, if you want someone who's going to be a constitutional candidate, thomasgriffing.com. And uh, Godspeed, and um, and have a good one. Uh, and uh, th th thanks very much, sir. I'll say goodbye to you real quick once I'm uh, done ending this recording. Thanks again, Thomas. Okay. okay.